Hey guys, on today's review, we're going to do the MBH 200 EX from Pioneer. So stay tuned. So every year Pioneer updates the radios and this year of course as we always say is no different. Yes. This guy here is a replacement for the MVH290. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people get confused because it's like wait a minute 290 is a higher model number than let's say a 200. And the reason why is they did away with that whole 90 scheme because it was an 80 before 90. A double zero actually is rotating it back out. So it was 90 now it's back to zero zero. Next year will probably be a 10. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it'd be 210. So what we have is an update to that radio. It's a total update. This yes. is a major overhaul. But let's not talk about it. Let's open the box and tell you what comes inside. All right. You have the standard five foot USB. The power plug. Now this is the same power plug that Pioneer's been using in these radios for several years now yes. so if you have an older version you can easily just unplug plug it back in bluetooth microphone bag of screws and we have a quick start guide and a warranty card that's right just a quick start guide pioneer for most of the radios this year are going to online owner's manuals so you have to download them there and you can get that at pioneerelectronics.com now we're going to go ahead and finish getting this out of the box, turn it around and show you guys the back. So looking at the back of the radio, we have the one and only USB. It is a 5 volt, 1 amp. Next to that is this brown RCA. This is your rear view camera input. Right above it, the yellow RCA is going to be your video output. You have the auxiliary input right here. You have six channel, 2 volt output starting with subwoofer on the bottom, rear and front. Next we have the main power plug input. The eighth inch jack on this side is gonna be for your steering wheel control inputs. The smaller jack above it is gonna be for the Bluetooth mic. And then of course the FM antenna. Now let's go ahead and power this up and turn it around and take a look at the screen. This has a 6.2 inch clear resistive WVGA LED backlit touchscreen that is 800 by 480. You have your volume up and down. The next button down is your mute. Your main home button display which will actually turn the display off so that if it's at nighttime and it's really bright you can just turn the display off so you can see better tap the screen it will come back on if you press and hold the menu button it'll actually turn the radio's main power off this is a power off feature meaning it's it's dead hit any button it'll wake back up next is your track up and track down features as well as way over here in the corner this little dot is the reset button now the one thing you'll notice is this does not have a cd dvd player slot it has no spinning media whatsoever so if you want one that has that you want the avh not the mvh now let's go ahead and go into the menu and take a look at one of the first new features that is going to be here at the art palette, which is going to be backgrounds and displays, commonly called themes. Now, unlike previous models, this actually has two different displays as well as off. You cannot import your own display. I'm going to save you the headache of asking me. Illumination. This has now five illuminations as well as the rainbow as well as you can actually set your own illumination color now for the buttons on the side. Themes. You now also have five themes. So you can change the background color to better match your dash. This also has a 50 watt by four internal amplifier that is 14 by four of actual power. Now let's hit the menu button and take a look at the sources that this thing comes preloaded with. The first one of course is gonna be AM FM. Go ahead and tap that. Here you'll have your three FM, FM one, two, and three. Each one has six presets. Simply tap the drawer and you can see what those are. To make a preset, just press and hold. You can close the drawer. It has one AM. If you hit the home button or the drop down arrow right here, this will also list your sources. Next up is the auxiliary. Now this has a true aux AV input. It's a full AV input. So you can actually, if you've seen any of the videos we've done where we've hooked up the CAC3AV aux cable to hook up an iSimple MediaLinks HDMI so that you can mirror your phone, this unit is totally compatible with that. Source off, power off. 
Source off will just put the unit to sleep. This will allow you to still make and receive Bluetooth phone calls. Power off is just like when you press and hold the menu button. It just turns the radio off. It's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna do that? Select yes, it'll power the unit down. Next up is going to be the USB. In this case, we have an iPod connected to it, but you can hook up an Android using MTP, as well as a thumb drive that is encoded in FAT32 or 16. Go ahead and tap that. It will display our album artwork when it is connected over USB. You can track up, track down, and or search through your artists, your albums. Tap over here, you can get to your playlist. The last source that we haven't talked about yet is Bluetooth. And the reason why I wanted to stop and, and tell you this is because this has a major improvement over last year in both music and fun. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So in the main menu, we can go ahead and select Bluetooth audio, or of course we can always select it from the drop down menu. So here it's gonna display the song, the artist, and the album. You'll notice there is no artwork being displayed. It doesn't do that. But if you tap over here where you see this dual phone icon, it will give the ability to switch between three phones. Now these phones are gonna be independent from the actual Bluetooth phone. These are just for music. So in this case, we're listening to Nando 13's phone. So we'll switch over here to Bluetooth phone for calling. And here we're displaying Mr. White's contacts. So these are all right here. Now if we wanna to switch to Nando's phone, we simply select the gear, select connections, and then tap to one of the three phones that you can have active. Now the biggest improvement on these, that by far the biggest improvement, is in the EQ section. That's right. They've gone ahead and put the Pioneer EQ that's available on the NEX and the, and the higher end AVH radios are now built into these models. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Make sure you're playing a source and there's two ways you can get to the basic EQ. You can come over here and tap EQ and it'll pull up the new 13 band EQ or select the gears icon above it, come down here to where you see the radiating speaker and here you'll see EQ. This will also allow you to get into all the other sound adjustments, not just the EQ. If you tap this, this will only take you into the EQ and nothing else. Now once you're in the EQ, simply tap the screen and you can adjust the 13 band EQ. You have two customizable EQ settings, as well as you have five presets. So you have super bass, powerful, natural, vocal, and flat. Go back a page, balance and fader. Source level adjust. Source level adjust is a great tool to have because not all devices have the same output level. So this will allow you to go in and actually turn that up so that when you're going from source to source to source, they all play at the same level. Subwoofer on, subwoofer off. Very helpful when you're tuning your system. Speaker level. Now, they've gone ahead and added in the full time alignment package to these radios. You have individual level control for each one of your speakers, including your subwoofer. So this is where your subwoofer level control is. You can also pick your listening position from here. Now, when you pick your listening position from here, it's gonna just give you a basic default setting. Of course, you can go in and adjust it any way you want. Page down, crossovers. So you have front, rear, and sub crossovers. They can be independent, so you don't have to keep your rear crossover the same as your front crossover. If you toggle back, you can get into your subwoofer crossover as well. You simply tap these arrows here to adjust the frequency and then you can come over to these two arrows here and adjust the slope. Subwoofer settings is just a fast key to the subwoofer crossover. Listening position is a fast key to the listening positions that were the same ones that were in the speaker level control. Time alignment. Time alignment is where you go ahead and add in the distances to make the time alignment actually work properly. You wanna measure between your ear and the speakers around you and then simply put those numbers in here and you're all set and ready to go. Bass boost. Bass boost is nice if you listen to music that has very low bass or no bass at all in the recording. You can simply tap through these and it will help to restore bass to the music. Now, be careful with this because if you're using it with music that does have bass, there's a good possibility that you can blow some speakers because it's just not out of the subwoofer output, it's out of all the outputs. Page down, loudness. 
This has a three-step loudness control, low, mid, and high. Loudness is great for low-level listening. If you want to have some impact to your music and you're listening to it at low levels, loudness will give you that. It will naturally roll off as you turn the volume up. Now let's go ahead and go into the menu and look at a few more features that you might be interested in. If you select AV source setting, this will allow you to turn the Bluetooth on and off if for some reason you don't want Bluetooth. Auxiliary input on and off. The reason why you might want to turn this off is so that it doesn't appear in the drop down menu. Camera settings. As we said at the beginning, this has an input for a backup camera. This is where you connect it. So when you hook up power to the purple white wire in the main harness, you have to come in here and make sure you turn it on or it will not work. Now once you've gone ahead and turned it on, if you come over here to your drop down menu, you will notice it's populated with a camera view. That's how you know if you've actually turned it on or off, if you see this in your menu selection. System language, you have the five languages to choose from. English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Chinese. And then last but not least, restore settings. Restore settings is great for like when we do demos like this to where we're touching every button in the radio and could possibly screw things up. Or for you at home where you just wanna go through and touch everything and adjust it and do mad crazy things, go ahead and select restore settings, restore. Now to do restore settings, you do have to make sure that the light green wire is connected, that's the emergency brake wire. Anytime you see a feature that is grayed out, more than likely it's because that wire needs to be engaged. All right guys, that is the MVH200EX. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Well, end the show, so All right. go home. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, also in Twitter. All right guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you later next time. Bye.